Welcome everyone. Today we'll be talking about or we'll be reviewing the book Blueprint for Success. And we are privileged to have the author himself, my good friend Dan Mutuko. Welcome to the session, Dan. Asante sana. So Dan, just to kick it off, um, as I was reading, because I, I read the book earlier today, um, right. I know you. this is your second book. Right. You did an earlier book called How to, How to f f Easily Use Facebook for Profit. Right, right, right. And this seems to be quite a departure from your first book. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about what led you to write this book. Okay, I once I read uh, I wrote my first book how to easily use Facebook for profit I realized it was very much focused to people who are running business and specifically who want to leverage the power of the Facebook platform but I realized not everyone will end up being successful even after reading that book in their business so I came with the idea to write a book about success that cuts across all areas so that is the reason why I did this. If you want to achieve success in your relationship, finances, health, life in general, these are principles that you can be able to use. So I wanted to take care of more people in different sectors and different areas, and at the same time, uh, help as many people as I could. Great. Yes. So I think it's a perfect time to just dive in. Tell yes. us a little bit more about Blueprint for Success guaranteed steps to achieve anything i had read several books and i investigated several successful people in different areas and i realized that they had a common theme in a certain uh, there was a common theme and how they were able to achieve success so i've been able to distill the ideas from the different uh, successful people i looked at uh, there is jeff bezos there is a uh, Steve Jobs from Apple. I also looked at uh, Darren Hardy. Mm -hmm. the, he was at one point the publisher of uh, Success Magazine. Mm -hmm. And yes, so distilling all these ideas and putting them in a very simple five-step uh, framework mm -hmm. for anyone to be able to achieve success in whatever they want to do. Yes. Yeah, so you call this system, and I like the way you put it, a uh, blueprint for success yeah. framework. Yes. Um, it's about, uh, and, and you've divided the book into the framework itself. Yeah. And then you've got some, what you're calling, um, some, some sort of um, ideas of how to ensure that you are successful, what you call enemies to success and success accelerators. Yeah. Uh, but before we go into that, please tell us more about what, that, what, the, blue, what the Blueprint for Success framework is all about. The framework starts from your mind, so I call the first bit your philosophy. You need to be able to identify what is your philosophy, what is your mindset, what is your belief on whatever aspect is it that you want to achieve. So you need first to get the right uh, philosophy, because your philosophy takes you to the next step, which is getting the right choices. We make our choices based on our philosophies, consciously or unconsciously. Once you make the choice, it's a good thing, or it's a bad thing, you still need to go to the next step, which is taking action. There is a difference between deciding that I'm going to save a certain amount of money and actually going ahead and starting saving. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between making a choice that I need to live a healthier lifestyle and taking the action of actually going out there, maybe joining the gym, doing your exercise and all that. So the next step is taking action. And this is the most important and the most, something that I'm really passionate about. You need to be able to take action because without action, nothing will show up. Results come in as a result of taking action. Once you take this action over and over, it gets you to the next step, which is it now becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit, it is easier to do. And your habits, of course, now takes you to the last step, which is your lifestyle. You get it wrong from the word go. You have bad philosophies, which lead to bad choices. Mm -hmm. You end up taking the wrong actions. You form bad habits and, of course, a bad lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And if it is a good, um, good philosophy, taking good, uh, make good choices, good action, good habits, and a successful lifestyle, 
Okay. Yes. So let's go straight to it. So the yeah. first step on your blueprint is about the philosophy. Yes. And I think we've been talking a lot about even the past book reviews that we've done. Yes. The idea of mindset. Um, in other places, I think the most, the last book that we did on your best year ever, he calls it about your beliefs. Yes. Um, so it's, it's just another time to refer to the same thing. Yes. Um, so how do you cultivate a good philosophy that will ultimately guide you to make good choices and take the right actions and then form the right habits? Um, because most of us, and I, I think you'll agree that yeah. our upbringing from our parents, from the environments that we lived in, from the people that we engaged in, um, have, have helped us probably have limiting beliefs. Yeah. So how do you, how do you overcome that element to, to, to enable you to have a good lifestyle and um, good, good habits? I would say each and every one of us have a certain philosophy if they know it or not. And how we come up with these philosophies is how we consume information and the environment that we're in. So for you to be actively and deliberate about feeling yourself and having good philosophies, you need to control what gets into your mind. And that is, we have two main doors, either through our ears, what we hear, mm -hmm. and our eyes, what we see. So you need to be very deliberate to decide what kind of things do I allow to get into my mind through what I you watch, through what you hear. If you're around people who are always complaining, you will end up having that kind of uh, thinking about nothing is, uh, no, uh, the world is not fair, there's nothing that comes in easily and you get into that habit of complaining. But if you're around people who are positive, if you feed yourself positive media, you watch motivational videos, you listen to audio programs, you are building up your philosophy, your way of thinking. And that is the best way to be very deliberate. The bad news is that by default, what is outside into the public domain, it is bad news and things that will feed you to have bad philosophy. But for you to be able to create a good mindset, you need to go out there very intentional and deliberately seeking for this good. The bad is what we get by default if you do nothing about it. So control is a good thing and I think that brings us to the point of choices. Yes. I think the popular sort of um, thought that is out there is you should always go with the flow. What's your take about control? Is that something that, and I think you've, you've, you've mentioned it quite briefly. Yeah. That's something that people need to to own up, to take much control of their own life? You need to take control of your own life. Mm -hmm. I think in the book, um, Robert Kiyosaki has a several series of books, and one of the things he says, for you to be successful, you need to take uh, care of, or you need to mind your own business. Mm -hmm. And I think one of his books, he says, it is not just the business running, the buying and selling. It is Mind your own business. What are you feeding yourself? Are you controlling what you are consuming? That is your own business. That is what you should actually take control of. You should not follow the crowd. Don't just go anywhere because everyone is going. Don't do things because they are popular. Most of the time these popular things are not going to serve you to achieve whatever you want to achieve. So you should integrate and have controls in everything that you want to do. Okay. Yes. So. That's a good word of advice out there. Banish the thought about just going with the flow. Yeah. Take control of your life. Be intentional about what you do. As much as there are things that are out there that we don't have control of. We don't have control of the weather. Yeah. We don't have control of many other things. But you have control. Of, you have agency as a person to take on control of your own life. Great. So we move on to the third step of yeah. your framework. which So we've spoken about philosophy, which informs your choices and your choices inform your actions yeah what what would you say about actions action taking action is the most the most important thing uh, when you take action you are able to learn more actually about yourself about other factors that come into play rather than just having it in your mind and playing it and I've come to learn that most people don't get to that point where they take action as a result of the fear of failing. 
So in the book, I think I've also talked about how do you overcome that fear of failing and to go ahead and taking the action despite the fear being there. Actually, courage is not the absence of fear, but acting still despite the fear being there. Great. Yes. And repeated fear is what forms what you call habits. Yeah. And I think in the habits section, I came across a strategy that you, you mentioned, um, which is a four-step framework that you, you say it was inspired by the book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duggan. Yes. Could you please talk a, bit, a little bit more about that four-step process, about how habit works and how we can use that to probably um, liberate ourselves from bad habits? Okay. Once you take action, it is important for you to uh, notice that when you take this action over a period of time, it becomes a habit. But for you to cultivate good habits, you need to understand how habits work. Mm -hmm. So in the book, um, The Power of Habits, Charles breaks it uh, down into the framework on how you can be able to get good habits. Number one is to identify the routine. Once you know, how do you end up doing what you do? May it be a good habit or a bad habit? Then you need to be able to uh, take a step experiment with the uh, rewards, being able to identify what are the cues that makes you do certain action and then have an, having an action plan. So that is the first step. So what I can say, for example, if you have a habit of um, smoking, which is a bad habit, or you have a habit of taking unhealthy food, you need to ask yourself, uh, how does it happen? There's always maybe a trigger that happens so when you get angry when you get into a confrontation situation and you don't like that thing you tend that might be the cue that tends to take you now to the action itself and then once you do this you smoke or you take that junk food what is the reward that you get you tend to get to feel good about yourself or something so that is usually like the cycle that takes place um, and what ends up being our habits so if you realize that when I get into a confrontation, that is the cue that takes me to this spiral of bad habit and I get a certain reward. You can be now deliberate and say, when I get angry, I will not go and start eating the junk food. What is the reward that I get out of this kind of unhealthy food? What is the reward that I get out of this smoke? I think maybe it is relief and I think that I have solved the problem for a while. So once you identify the reward, you can change the action. Mm -hmm. So what makes you feel good? What makes you forget? So you might be, when I get angry, I know the reward that I'm seeking is that feel good. I think I can decide that is the time that I go to the gym and actually really do a lot of exercise to get the same kind of reward. Mm -hmm. So once you have that, uh, identify that cycle, then the first step would be, you need to have an action plan. Mm -hmm. You don't just know it and leave it be very deliberate that next time this happened this is what i will do great yes so we've actually just gone through the framework that you outline what you're yes. calling the blue print for success framework yes and that of course as you, your dad I mentioned leads to your lifestyle yes now the the next two chapters i think are very critical yeah the, for you for somebody to take into consideration as much as they work on cultivating or ensuring they live up um, uh, or use these principles in their own lives, there are some um, considerations that they need to think of. What you're calling enemies of success. Yeah. And you've outlined about six of them. Yeah. I want you to make a good mention about procrastination and complacency. Yeah. Talk about those, those two uh, as some of the enemies of success. Yeah. As we try to pursue success in whatever area it is in our life, there are some things that will tend to derail us. And I have outlined some of them, and as you said, one of them is procrastination. Procrastination is, I think, should be among the top five killers of dream. You say, I will do this, I will do this, I'll do this, and you never do it. So in the book, I'll be able to outline different ways on how you can be able to beat procrastination and start proactively taking action. Um, procrastination really derails people because of uh, a law I came to learn actually the other day. It's called the law of diminish of intent. Such that you get something, be very excited about it, and you really want to do something about it. The longer it takes you to take action, 
the less likely it is that you will take action so that tends them i go to this seminar i really get fired up they say for you to do this i get so excited if i don't take action as quick as possible i'll say i'll start tomorrow i will review that the notes tomorrow then it goes to the next day the next day and then procrastination comes in mm. and chances of actually you taking action goes way down way low. yes and uh, the other one was uh, complacency. complacency i think as a um, species human beings i think we are born not just to be comfortable where we are that is why we keep on exploring new areas going to the moon trying we have yes the phone but we want to improve it we want to the best version but against that people tend to take comfort in yeah the comfort zone i really don't want because i don't know what is there behind the corner i'm comfortable here and that really kills people's dream for you to be successful you need to be able to go beyond what you are comfortable don't be complacent don't just say at least i have this i think that is one of the worst excuse people come and tell you don't worry if you fail at least you did this <laughs> you should not go with it at least what was your dream was it to go for the big thing go for it you better fall short of the big goal rather than saying i want to go for it because at least i have some money at least i have a family at least i have my relationship my wife my husband at least i have a good job that will kill your dream mm -hmm. as much as yes you have that good job that does not stop you from dreaming bigger and going for bigger things mm -hmm. that's the just enough syndrome <laughs> that we have in our society now. yes is there any other enemy of success that you feel you want to mention out of the six that you had outlined um in, not in specific i think the all of them are quite play a big part but procrastination i think is one of the key things that uh, we need really to work on okay. yes great so we go to the to the other the other aspect which was what you're calling success accelerators yes and you you mentioned about i think five of them yeah um one being about gratitude goal setting yeah. exercising i think you mentioned that physical exercise yeah mentorship out of these five i think the final one is about personal development investing in yourself yeah out of these five success accelerators can you speak a little bit about them out of the five i think i can really focus on personal development mm -hmm. this is the number one thing that if you take time to invest in yourself and develop yourself you will be able to achieve things way beyond anything that you thought you could have achieved personally i define personal development as being deliberate and intentional and investing time money and effort to be able to learn a new skill or improve on an existing skill to be able to achieve success so there's a the bit whereby you are becoming very deliberate and intentional you will need to invest in fast time it's not something that will come out of the blue carve out time to develop yourself at some point you will put in some money as much as we have a lot of free resources online videos online program ted talks online courses both free they will be get to a point where you need to use some money you need to buy that book you need to go for that seminar you need to sign up for a membership or a, a paid online course that is what is the most important thing and then this is about improving a certain skill that you already have or acquiring acquiring a totally new skills because it is these skills that will enable you achieve whatever you want to yes great so the best investment you can make out there is investing in yourself investing in yourself yeah you're the best deal out there so go right. ahead and put in the time and effort and resources required in yes. growing yourself and we go into where you're now talking about how you apply the blueprint of success the blueprint for success yes tell us a little bit about the toolkit that you've shared in the book yeah. um, and how people can begin now you know putting this all into action yeah so after sharing all this information i've put in the last uh, not the last chapter i think the second last chapter some worksheet on how you can be able to put an action plan into place and interrogate what are the things that you want to achieve so i've outlined i think five main areas there is something to do with personal growth and personal development something to do with finances there's some worksheet that you just fill in to start off the prog uh, the process there's personal finance or there's also 
uh, I think health, yes. physical health, emotional health, there's also relationships and all that. So there's a worksheet whereby I would like you to start living, it's called living the blueprint. So at the, at that chapter has some worksheet that you can start filling it up. It is not everything, but it is a starting point for you to be able to start living the blueprint for success. Great. Yeah. And the final chapter, you seem to give people an offer. Yes. Uh, for 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 a coaching session, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's also a, a coupon here that they could they could take advantage and, and um, consume one of your online courses. Yes. Tell us a little bit more on that. So once you buy this uh, the book, at the end of it, I'll give you an opportunity where you can be able to contact me, and we can be able to have an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one coaching, whereby you can start off your journey in the blueprint of success and then i give you a link where you can go to a platform where we have online courses for personal development and the good thing is there's a coupon there's a link and a code that you can get and you'll get access to a free online course on the basics of communication skills so if you want to become a master communicator there's a coupon here once you get the book and you start off a course free of charge the basics of communication skills so grab a copy yes. and uh, probably before we wrap it up maybe you can tell us a little bit more where does one get uh, to buy the book yeah um, I'm sure there are many people that will be looking forward to buy this book yes. after they watch this so uh, in the description below I'll put a link where you can be able to place an order the book goes for only 499 book so there's a link in the description go there place your order once you make the payment, you will be able to key in your transaction code and immediately you will get a free ebook on the same. So you will be able to download the ebook and start reading. If you're in Nairobi, just come to our offices to collect the physical copy with your receipt. So we are in Mindeleo House, which is opposite Anniversary Towers, that floor room number six. The office is Career Point Solutions. Once you come with your receipt, you get online, you'll be able to get your physical copy. But right away you make the payment, you get access to you the e-book. get e to the e-book. Yes. So there's the e-book option and of course the physical copy. So yes. and how, where do they get the e-book? Which is their, their address? Uh, they will get it through their email address. The email address they use to sign up oh, or to make to the payment. You. Yes. Okay. So when you book, you will put in your name, email address and the phone number. Make the payment, put in the code and then it will be sent automatically to your email. Great. And yes. so Dan, uh, as, we, as we are just wrapping up this, this session of the book review, I had another question. Yes. And I'll probably digress a little bit from yes. our book review. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to know, and I'm sure probably a number of people want to know. Yes. What was the process that you went through to write a book? Uh, as I say, many people out there are aspiring authors. Yeah. And as somebody said, there's a book in each and every one of us. Right, right. How can I go about writing a book? What was the process that you went through and what can you share about that? Writing this book was um, a little bit easier compared to my first book. That is uh, how to easily use Facebook for profit. But when what I got, uh, um, how I was able to write the book, I think is first conceptualizing the idea. What is it that you want to do? Then I took up a course called how to write a book in 24 hours by Stephen James which actually confirmed that whatever I was doing was right so it really reinforced that but the whole idea is have the, um, the idea that you want to bring it out break it down into simpler chunks which sometimes they are called the topics or the chapters then take time to fill in the information I wrote this book it took me about two to three months if I'm not wrong and I had the idea, but putting it on paper was the challenge. And one of the key things that really assisted me even to produce it in good time is the fact that I had an accountability partner, which is you. <laughs> so every time we used to meet uh, after one week, you would ask me how far are you in writing your book? So if I commit that this week I'll complete this chapter, because I have an accountability partner who is able to really push me, I will not just sit down and say, uh, I can write that chapter. All right, let me do it next week. Because as an author, I also experienced that bit of procrastination. Why should I do it now? Let me do it next week. Let me do it tomorrow. Today I'm very tired and such kind of thing. So having a framework 
understanding the topics that you want to put in then i would say each day i would write between 200 maybe to 300 words some were good days i would get up to 500 words some were really bad day even putting down 50 words was a challenge <laughs> but at least it is a that slow progression i can tell you i never took one full day to write this book mm. maybe an hour 30 minutes but when they accumulated mm. i ended up with a book great yes. great so i just want to acknowledge you i think dan has been a great friend yeah. and actually the our friendship is not that long i think <laughs> we, we formed this friendship what about a year or so ago yeah right, right um and i must say you're a great role model i think you're one of the people that i can say is 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 one very action oriented and then two very also results oriented kind of a person so Thank keep you. doing what you're doing keep impacting people through your work and uh, looking forward to seeing you at the top thank you very thank much you very i really much. appreciate it yes yeah thank you so that's it that was the book blueprint for success guaranteed steps to achieve anything that you desire go ahead grab a copy it has been a phenomenal book that i have learned a, quite a great deal of um, there are great nuggets that are stored in there so don't don't even hesitate go right away and purchase a copy of this group of, of this book thank you very much i really appreciate it. and also maybe our viewers please like this video leave a comment and uh, subscribe to our channel uh, so that you can be able to get more of our videos also click on the bell so that you can get notification each and every time we upload a video thank you very much Ta -da -da -da. Ta -da. <laughs>